today our hearts are one. We have all come to pay our respects to Christopher, to Mary, to Fanny, to Troy V, and Gwendolyn. Five caskets for five kids taken too soon in a duplex fire on Valentine's Day. Tonight, we've learned more about what made them so special. Families testify at the Capitol in favor of legalizing medical marijuana. We are just one of the many, many families in Minnesota that need and want this for our child or our loved one. Hear their side of this very personal debate. Nearly half a foot of snow has fallen in the metro and there is more to come tonight. Now we brought in extra crews to make sure that you're prepared for the mess tomorrow. Dave Dahl's tracking the radar and snow totals. Our Tim Cherno has the latest road conditions and Jay Coles shows you what it's like in your backyard. Dave starts off our weather coverage with who's been hit the worst so far, Dave? Plus, if the SAT stumped you on words like replete and plethora, well, find out why your kids might have an easier time with the test than you did. Every winter, snow and ice covers the sidewalks of Nicolette Mall, but what could be included in the mall's redesign so you never see it again? All right, enough talking about <laughs> snow. It is time to think some warm thoughts. We'll show you where families are going in the metro to escape the winter. Plus, young cooks are surprising even the most experienced chefs. I have young 16, 17 year olds coming up to me going, you know, I'd, I'd like to use truffles uh, for something. It's like, how, how do you even know about truffles? Yeah, these kids aren't just into Doritos. What they're doing to be the next star in the kitchen. It is music almost any sports fan will recognize. It's known around the world, and wait till you hear a new rendition of it made by a Minnesota native. Tonight, drivers are still having problems out on the roads. They're iced over on the interstates, highways, and side streets. Live look right now at 94 westbound in Brooklyn Center. You can see some lights flashing there in the middle of your screen. A car stalled out on the left side. This is the case all over the metro. State Patrol says this is some of the worst they've seen in the last 25 years. Deputies are being pulled from other duties just to help out on the highways here. People are also still digging out of their cars, scraping ice off their windshields and slipping on the highways. We'll be feeling the effects of this worst winter storm of the season for quite a while. Meteorologist Jonathan Uhas is here with how much snow we got and what to expect for the rest of the night. Jonathan? All right, Eric. Well, we had about 6 to 10 inches of snow here in the Twin Cities. Farther north, we expected the heaviest snow to be northwestern Wisconsin and northeastern Minnesota, where there has been as much as 18 inches of snow up in the Duluth area. But a very sharp cutoff to this line out in western Minnesota. Minnesota, west of Alexandria, west of Marshall, they are looking at us and saying, what are you talking about? Snow? We didn't get any snow out here. They hardly had any out in the far western part of the state. But around the Twin Cities, with the snow yesterday, we had about into this morning, we had anywhere from 8 to 9 inches. And then northwestern Hennepin County, eastern Wright County, and southeastern Sherburne County were the golden snow shovel. 11 inches of snow, but what's interesting about this, you probably heard some thunder yesterday, and the areas that had thunder had the heaviest snowfall amounts because that's where the snow was coming down the fastest and hardest, while areas that didn't had lighter snow amounts. So you have these places out in western Carver County that only had five inches of snow. It's almost about half in the western part of Carver County compared to the eastern side of that county. I will let you know about the temperatures that are headed back to zero again tonight. I'll tell you about that in the rest of the forecast at 445. See you in a few. Thanks, Jonathan. Let's take you out live now to I-94 in St. Paul. Drivers are still taking it slow because of the ice still out there. You can take a look at this cab that skidded off the road there. Sure, uh, hope the driver is okay and any passengers he or she may have picked up. MnDOT spent all day putting chemicals out there on the roads. They told us the chemicals work best when the temperature is about 20 degrees and when fewer drivers are out on the road. But you can see that cab is causing uh, quite the backup there on that ramp. So while the cold forecast isn't going to help much, MnDOT thinks lower weekend traffic will be a benefit, but it could take a while. The point is, it's frozen and it's slippery. It's salt down and it is working, but it's going to take some time. Some motorists are going to need to be patient and they're going to need to slow down and take their time. Check out this MnDOT graphic. It shows you current travel conditions around the rest of the state right now. The dark purple covers most of the state. Those are the areas where travel is not advised. Those red circles there indicate roads that are closed. Governor Dayton has also issued an emergency order to help stranded drivers. It directs the Minnesota National Guard to help them out. 
Be sure to also check your local city emergencies. They may be altered since the ice is slowing down crews who are trying to get out there and remove all the snow. Go to KSTP.com to keep track of any changes. XL Energy says 90% of people have power now after the storm. We got an update just about an hour ago. 1,900 customers in Minnesota did not have power. 900 of those are in the East Metro. 300 are in the West Metro. XL says freezing rain, wet snow, and high winds snapped tree branches and downed power lines. One good thing about the storm may be the timing. Homeowners have the weekend to shovel, scrape, and clean it up. And for some, there's a lot of work to do. Five Eyewitness News reporter Steve Patterson is live outside of one of those homes in Savage. Steve? Yeah, that's right. First of all, it is absolutely gorgeous here in Savage. The snow looks fantastic. And we started to drive around. We noticed a lot of people had plowed driveways. Then let me introduce you to my buddy, Kwong Lok. Kwong, uh, this is a clear driveway. However, this was not a plowed driveway. You were shoveling here. That's right. Uh, how did you... Look at the pile of snow behind you. How did you manage to, how long did it take you to shovel this? I got to do it a couple of times. A couple of times? Yeah. Now your kids were home from school, so you right. got to recruit them. You had some extra hands on deck to help you out. That's right. Were they any good or were, were you thinking, come on kids, lift a little, <laughs> lift a little more than that? No, they were really helpful. They did? They yeah. Did a good job? That's, they did, yeah. Uh, I couldn't do it without them. <laughs> oh, see that? That's that's a father of the year kind of line right there. And so is that the plan? Every time it snows, why don't you own a snowblower in a place like this? Yeah, I figure out why not come and enjoy, do some exercise. There you go. So you see that you see the, the physical benefit in it. Oh, definitely. All right, but the question of the hour: How does your back feel right now? This you've shoveled a lot. Yes, I did. It feels good. No aches or pains. There you go. Ladies and gentlemen, take notes from Kwong Lo. Kwong, thank you so much for hanging out with us. By the way, get a load of this. Coming up at 5, this is so cool. There's a lot of action happening right there. A giant snow mound. See that machine? We're going to hear a lot more from that. There are some excited kids in this neighborhood. We will tell you all about it at 5. In the meantime, in beautiful Savage, Steve Patterson, 5 Eyewitness News. And snow-covered Savage. Wow, a lot of snow out there. Thanks, Steve. If you watched our morning show, you might have seen sports anchor Chris Long put in a request for a plow through a new app called Plows. At midnight, he asked for a plow. He said he received a confirmation me message about 5 this morning, and the plow showed up around 6.30. Now, here's how his driveway looked. Chris said he did shovel a bit in some small spots. He says he would use it again for big snowstorms like this one. It did cost $45, so he said he'll pass when there are smaller snowstorms. Despite their hard work, crews at Minneapolis St. Paul International Airport couldn't guarantee every flight would leave on time. Today there were 15 canceled flights and 48 delays. It's an improvement from yesterday when the storm forced 200 flights to cancel. Our coverage of this storm continues later on in this newscast with another check of the roads at 441. Jonathan will have his full forecast at 445. Then at 448, pictures from viewers with how they are dealing with the snow and ice out there. And dogs, too. Tracking your other local headlines tonight. In the last hour, we learned a Rogers High School senior will not be charged in connection with a tweet that landed him a two-month suspension from school. The Hennepin County Attorney's Office said there was not enough evidence to file charges Police said one of his tweets suggested an improper relationship between he and a teacher. He was suspended for violating the school's social media policy. We have contacted the superintendent to see if the district will change his suspension. We've learned one of the proposed developments near the new Viking Stadium will be a 150-room hotel. We've told you about a parking ramp with airspace available. Ryan Companies filed new plans with the city of Minneapolis on Thursday, saying it wants to add a Radisson Hotel along with a proposed apartment tower above the future ramp. However, Mortensen has already proposed a 300-room hotel in the same space. City Council will choose who will get to use that space and could make a decision next month. The future of a proposal to build a hotel in the heart of Dinkytown is in jeopardy after a crucial Minneapolis City Council vote. Doran Development wants to build a 120-plus room hotel. Last month, the Heritage Preservation Commission denied the demolition requests needed to make the project a reality. Dorn appealed, and this morning, the city council granted their appeal for two of the buildings, but not the third. That means Dinky Town Tattoo will stay put for now. And the project is on hold, at least until an in-depth study of the building's historical value has been completed. 
There's a new superintendent to lead the state's largest school district. The Anoka Hennepin School Board picked David Law. He's been working as the assistant superintendent in White Bear Lake schools for four years. David really present himself as a very well-rounded candidate. He has incredible communication skill, high energy. Anoka Hennepin's current superintendent, Dennis Carlson, is retiring. Taking a live look again at 94 in St. Paul, drivers are taking it easy since there's a lot of ice underneath those tires. Coming up next, the dramatic video where an SUV got stuck on the highway and actually started going backwards. Our temperatures are not too warm in the mid-teens right now here in the Twin Cities. And as that sun heads down, those roads are going to get much more slippery because we're going to have instant refreeze. We're headed back down to zero. I have your weekend forecast coming up at 445. The fact that she's here today, she's behind the bench, and she's part of the process has been incredible. It's been great for the girls. A coach and her hockey team have a special bond. What happened to her right before the season that brought the team closer together? Next. All right, taking a live look back out on the roads, this is a live look at 494 in Maple Grove. You can see slow going out here, down to one lane in some spots. Our keen eyes in the newsroom noticed that uh, way, way up at the top of your screen, there's a semi that appears to have been stalled out, and the cars you can see there are trying to go around, and that's making for a very slow commute here at 494 and 49th Avenue. The roads are also icy and very dangerous. State Patrol is advising people just to stay home if you can. Meteorologist Jonathan Uhas will have your full forecast coming up here in just a few moments. One of the most dramatic moments we saw on the roads today was on 394 in Minneapolis. From Chopper 5 here, you can see this car was stuck in the middle of the highway and in true Minnesota spirit people got out of their cars to help as you can see there they're pushing but State Patrol says of course you should never get out of your car on the highway even when the car did get some momentum it actually started to slide backwards a tow truck eventually came out to save that unlucky driver we know many, many drivers across the state needed a lot of assistance, and we checked in with AAA in the last hour. It says, by 4 this evening, get this, it responded to 1,537 calls. An average winter day sees about 800. The record is 3,000, so this is not uncharted territory. Every hockey season is different for every team, and for every team that competes to get to the state tournament, they have a unique story to tell. Our Ellen McNamara joins us now with a story from the Edina girls hockey team. Ellen? Well, Eric, a solid team can always bounce back from adversity, even be a better team because of it. This year, the Edina Hornets found themselves in a really tough spot just four weeks before tryouts. And even though they fell one game short of the state tournament this year, their season was still a success. And way to shoot hard, right? Way to shoot hard. In this rink, green banners tell the story of the school's success. Girls on the ice are hungry to add to the collection, and so is their coach, who right now is Dean Williamson. I've known most of these kids since they've been babies. Here we go, guys, set the tone. Kids like Laura Baker, who's now a senior, are focused and more motivated than ever. Well, it was actually kind of a perfect situation amidst a terrible circumstance. That terrible circumstance happened just four weeks before tryouts this hockey season. Instantly, I knew it probably wasn't good. September 29th, 2013 was a scary day for Edina's head coach, Laura Slominski, who everyone calls slow-mo. Push each other now. The former star for Burnsville and U of M captain took a hit while she was playing. When someone tells you you break your neck, then you kind of go into that panic mode of what does that mean? Thankful that she could still walk slow-mo needed surgery and needed to come up with a plan for her team hockey dad Williamson who has a rich hockey history himself stepped in I knew him all I've coached him all through youth hockey so it was kind of an easy transition after surgery went well slow-mo focused on her health and her team kept thinking about adding to their banners we didn't want her accident and our problem to interfere with how we were gonna do it in the season but like her team who pushed through adversity slow-mo did too a leave of absence is something she doesn't do. And instead of coming back in May, Slomo attended almost every game and has been at practice providing more individual coaching. The fact that she's here today, she's behind the bench, and she's part of the process has been incredible. It's been great for the girls. All right. Coaches often say when you're faced with adversity, how you handle it 
makes you who you are. It shows how, like, shows her character and shows that she really cares about us and it helps us kind of come together as a team. I really see it as motivation for me to push forward and do it for slow-mo, really. It's kind of using her accident and all that she's taught me and seeing her as that role model and working every day so that I can accomplish something for her. Yep, no, that sounds good. For slow-mo and her entire team, they've handled her accident just fine. And they're stronger, tougher, and closer because of it. Thanks, guys. You guys are so nice. And Eric, even though the team is disappointed, they got knocked out, of course, by Eden Prairie just before the state tournament. This season really wasn't about hockey. Right. I mean, it was about life, and it was about learning how to respond when something unexpected happens. Nickname is Slow Mo. You gotta yeah. love that. She didn't look too slow mo out there on the ice. She yep. actually looks like she's recovered quite well. She's basically the complete opposite of her nickname. So, <laughs> Go yeah, figure. Yeah, but she's just an inspiration to her girls. Well, I'm sure they're all glad to have her back. Yep. All right, thanks a lot, Ellen. Great story. Coverage of the girls' state hockey tournament semifinal, by the way, and final. Final action is this weekend over on 45 TV. If you can't watch it on TV, we are streaming all the games live on prep45.com. All right, meteorologist Jonathan Uhas is here with how much of a hassle the commute home is looking to be tonight, Jonathan? It's going to be a big hassle. I don't know if you can see to the left of your screen, you can see Interstate 94 on the left side of your screen, and those cars, look at, they're just crawling along. The road is covered with ice, with about one to two inches of ice and compacted snow out there. So if you're expecting somebody home this evening, uh, they may be kind of grumpy, and, and you'll know why, because it's going to be a long drive. The hassle factor, we're going to give it a nine tonight, because it is just going to be slow. It's been just terrible here all day long in the Twin Cities. And what happened was we had all that slush last night when the snow first started falling. Then the temperatures dropped, the snow became powdery, all of it got compacted down, and now we have, the, again, about two inches of compacted ice and snow on many roads. Plus, it was drifting over, too, so that caused numerous problems, mainly on the outskirts of the Twin Cities. As you get southwest, there's still impassable roads across portions of Carver County, Scott County, and heading down toward the Mankato area. Now, as we go to the temperatures this evening, by the way, these temperatures, this is more typical of what the low temperatures should be this time of the year. We are just way, way below average here the metro to the north it's even colder a little bit warmer to the south what you don't see on this map is down toward des moines it's around 40 right now omaha is close to 50 degrees so that temperature contrast really driving a lot of the wind that we still have here across minnesota today that storm system has moved to the east it's bringing rain and thunder to the east coast big flight delays right now in the eastern cities from boston down through new york city and philadelphia about two hour delays and 90 minute delays now at denver so there's a lot of active weather across the country denver's just been getting some rain and wind but Here's what's left of that storm that has now worked its way into the eastern part of the United States and eastern Canada and moved away from us. And believe it or not, it's warm enough just southwest of here tonight for rain across Nebraska and South Dakota. It's like we're the we're the sore spot here of cold air across Minnesota and Wisconsin. And here we go again tonight. Clear skies. We're down to zero, 15 below for your low temperature. Winds out of the west tonight at 10 to 20 miles per hour. And even over the weekend, the winds are still going to remain quite gusty. On Saturday, breezy conditions, partly cloudy skies, and a high at 17 degrees. Average highs this time of the year are in the lower 30s. We're going to give the bright spot to Saturday just because it's the warmest of the next seven, but not very uh, warm for this time of the year. Sunday, we're at 15. And then look at the low temperatures every single night here. And if you probably went back and looked at records the last time you had the end of February with consecutive days of below zero, it may not have ever happened. So anyway, there you have it. We're in for another cold stretch here for the last week of February. I was hoping to be done with all those sub-zeros. All right, thanks, Jonathan. We asked you to send pictures of what you saw in your backyards after the storm, and here are some that caught our attention. Kathy in St. Paul sent us a photo of Chopper, the snow dog. Luann in Elk River found a robin in a snowy tree. Nice shot there. Carol took this photo from the state fairgrounds. By the way, the great get-together starts six months from today. Can't wait for that. Then take a look at this snow husky in Chisago City. Ten-year-old Stephanie Fina sculpted it. Nice job there. Be sure to email us your photos at pics at kstp.com. A lot of fun to be had in the snow. All right, a quick look at your business news now. A flat day to end the week on Wall Street. The Dow lost about 30. The Nasdaq was down just over four. Following its massive data breach, Target brought in a cybersecurity expert and his company to find out how it got hacked and what it can do to stop it from happening again. Kevin Mandia was in town for a recent tech conference, and we sat down with him. He told us all retailers are fighting a cyber war that's nearly impossible to win. 
if you have one little slip up, one little opening somewhere, it will be found. And quite frankly, in the world of cybersecurity, all advantage goes to the offense. All advantage goes to the attacker. Milestone Systems, the Minnetonka company that brought Mandia here, says it's found evidence of cyber attacks in every company it's been hired to check out. Mandia's advice for consumers is to track their identity, see if loans were taken out in their name, watch card data, and check credit scores. Well, forget the ice and snow. We'll show you where you can play golf in downtown Minneapolis this weekend. Next. Well, it doesn't matter if it's 16 degrees, snow is on the ground, and ice is all over the place, you can still find a way to golf in downtown Minneapolis. The U.S. Bank Skyway Open is back. This is the eighth year of the mini golf course, which you can find in the Skyway. One hole caught our eye, this one. It's a replica of what you see on the Mississippi between downtown and northeast Minneapolis. The cost of play changes based on the day and the age of the golfer. Proceeds support the Boys and Girls Club. We leave you with a live snowy look from Chopper 5 over the fresh blanket over Minneapolis. So have more fun.